Welcome everyone to Coaching in a Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be learning how to transform your life. And if you think about transforming your life, you're going to think about, well, is my life going to be better? Is it going to be something that I can do by myself? And it might be all the above. But how we transform the life is going to be unique because there is a process that can get you to a better life in a certain amount of time. Now, I know there's so many different types of programs, especially coaching programs, where they say in 30 days, you're going to get your new mindset, your new body. Same thing with for fitness programs. You're going to be in the best shape of your life in 10 minutes and all of these different types of things, these timestamps. But is there a magic timestamp? I think there is. They say that in 30 days, you build a habit. Now, it is dependent on the person, but typically between 28 days and 30 days, you're going to build a habit. Just because you built a habit does not mean you can get rid of that habit very quickly because it's not ingrained yet. And how do we ingrain things? Neuroplasticity. So if you are unfamiliar with neuroplasticity, I do have a podcast on it and I do have a blog on it. So make sure you check those out if you're trying to figure out how to change your mind to be more in line with what you want it to be. That's a complete rewiring of your system. But transforming your life that's a little bit different. It's kind of like bulldozing everything you built and then starting all over versus building new pathways and then operating under those new types of bridges. So there is a difference. Which is more difficult? I believe neuroplasticity is more difficult because it could take years in order for you to get that pathway built or all the pathways built that help you get to what you want. So if you need a strong mindset, you might have to have a strong mindset in relationships, in money, in career, whatever it is, you have to build all of those for mindset just to be solid all around versus transforming your life. You just have to focus on you and the area that you want. And you can focus on multiple areas at once. There is a difference and it's very subtle. So you have to be paying attention in today's episode. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and to rate the podcast and to let people know about it so we can help build a community of like-minded individuals who are trying to be more growth oriented. Now, let's get into our most recent blog that came out yesterday. So our most recent blog that came out yesterday is going to be talking about how to transform your life. And if you're familiar with the TUS series, the TUS is going to be Tune Up series, and this is going to be for my current and previous clients. I am having an influx of work and I'm not going to be able to be available as much as I would like to, probably until maybe August, end of August sometime. And then even then I have more work lined up. So it's going to be kind of iffy if I'm going to be able to do individuals and things like that. But I do have good news. I am going to be starting back the group coaching. So you're going to be able to sign up for group coaching and you're going to be able to work with me four times a month in a group, right? So it'll be about 10 to 20 people in a group. It's going to be intimate and it's going to be trying to get us into a better place. So look forward to that. I will keep everyone up to date on that. But for now, we need to figure out how to transform our life. And if you can think about transforming your life, we need to have some type of protocol. We just can't say, well, I'm going to transform my life and my life is automatically transformed. It doesn't work that way. And I know one of the things that coaching programs do and or plans and many other coaches, they'll say, well, we're going to work for three months. So we're going to work for a certain period of time. And it is an investment. It is. I understand. But this is a time investment here. This is a time commitment where you have to commit to yourself for 90 days. And this is not a diet. This is not some type of fad that you just follow and then everything fixes. This is a permanent change that you are trying to make. If you want to transform your life, it's like you're starting from scratch. And after the 90 days of you implementing this process, I want you to understand that your life will be getting back to better, but there's going to be a good probability that you're going to revert back to your old self if you don't get a coach. Now, you don't need a coach. You can get an accountability partner, but that's up to you right? Whatever works for you, make sure you have that. Because after these 90 days of transforming your life, 
your brain is going to want to come back to normal. It's going to want to come back to that old part, to that old self, because it's so familiar. And that new person you're creating or transforming into is going to be something that the brain, the body, it has to get used to that. And if you don't want to get used to it, guess what happens? You're going to revert back to your old self. So it's kind of like you have to be resilient after that 90-day point where you're like, okay, I did what I had to do. Now let me maintain. And then it's smooth sailing after that. And as soon as you get to a point where everything is automatic, then we begin the next shift because it's multiple shifts. And when you transform your life, it's going to be layers. So every time you do it, it gets better. So in this TUS series, I make it as clear as possible for anyone to follow on their own. Now, how to transform your life in six easy steps or six simple steps, whatever you want to consider it. There's six steps to it, not seven, six. Now, you might be able to get it done in five steps, but the sixth step, the last step that we're going to be talking about is going to be something like the icing on the cake where, yeah, you can have a cake and you can have filling and you can have decorations, but if you don't have the icing, it's really a cake. So we have to understand that aspect. You can still eat the cake. You still can enjoy the cake, but it's not going to be with the icing, right? So the icing is like step number six. So step number one, and I'm just going to kind of go down the list of the steps, and then I'm going to break each of those down. And then we're going to kind of talk about what to do next after that. So step one is going to be understanding your why. Step two is going to be developing a personal development mindset. Step three is going to be throwing out the trash. Step four is learning how to be mindful and present. Step five is going to be learning how to practice gratitude. And then step six is going to be seeking out a mentor, a coach, or a guide. So in these six steps, we are going to be beginning to transform our life. And if you read the blog, it's about five pages long. So it is a pretty long, lengthy blog. It is there because it's a TUS series. And typically TUS series are going to be longer because there's a lot more direction. Because typically, like I said, TUS series are for clients who have already worked with me. So they know the terminologies. They know what they have to do. It's kind of like a tune-up plan for them. Where my coaching is built to get you in and get you out, not keep you in. So if I have you for a month, I give you everything you need to be successful in a year. Now, will you do what you're supposed to be doing? That's up to you. Now, the same thing is possible if you have two months of coaching with me or three months, all the way up to nine months of coaching. I typically don't allow people to do any more than nine months of coaching with me. That is because after nine months, we have to allow all the teachings to finally start to plant their roots, right? And then once that happens, you can start to grow. And then if you need me after that point, how's the garden looking, right? To kind of go in and do like an introspective on how your mind is, we can do that. But it's not so much of you need coaching to get your mind right. After nine months, your mind should be perfect if you've been working with me. And that is a guarantee. If you're going to be resilient and you're just going to kind of be pushing through tossing money, not doing the assignments that I give you, then of course you can't expect the results. So you have to understand that aspect. Understanding your why is going to be dealing with like your purpose, passion, and your gift. And when you understand what you're supposed to be doing in your life, things get simple. For me, though I was good at accounting, though I was good at teaching, though I was good at running and fitness and all of these different things, where did I end up? I ended up with my own business and I'm a coach. Now, I can tell you that I enjoy numbers. I enjoy math. I enjoy fitness. But out of all of those different things, my passion is teaching, education. And I used to have a running joke. When I was in college, I would say, to be honest, it doesn't matter what I teach. As long as I can teach, I would do it. If there was a job teaching people how to tie shoes, I would do it. And then I kind of realized when I was a music teacher and I'm in a kindergarten classroom and all these kindergartens are coming in with their shoes untied and I have to stop the class because we're dancing and we're moving. And last thing I need is for an accident to happen. So I started tying shoes. So I was like, I guess I got my wish. So that is one aspect of teaching. But teaching can be so much more. 
And then you have to look at the other areas of how you want that teaching to look like. Maybe you want to teach a dance. Maybe you want to teach a subject. And then you have to figure out what grade level you want to teach elementary or middle school or high school or college. Some people cannot deal with younger kids. They have that passion for education and teaching, but they can only teach college students or high school students. Everyone is different. For me, I can teach any level. I can teach kindergarten. I can teach college. I have taught both. I enjoy both. There is no difference. Now, the biggest difference, if I had to say, they're more playful when they're younger, meaning they're going to be silly. They're going to be outgoing. They're going to be dancing and they're moving, even though I can still get the college kids moving and dancing and things like that, especially for education classes, music classes, things like that. It's kind of like they have to open up, but it's a little bit different for them because they are growing up. And when they're finally adults in college, they are taught to be closed, right? Keep their emotions under wrap and everything. But now we are unwrapping them and they're figuring out how to be alive again. It's an interesting type of dynamic for when people are going into education or going into a field where they kind of have to go against what society made them ready for, meaning sit down, be quiet, raise your hand, and then into a world of, all right, be free, charismatic, intrinsic. So understanding your why is pretty simple. The only thing you have to do is write down why five times. Just ask yourself why five times. After you ask yourself why five times, repeat it as much as you need to. Maybe do it every day, every week, whatever you want. Typically for my clients, I have them do it for one week, once a day, maybe two times a day, depending on the person. And from there, I can get a good understanding. Well, what is your passion? What is your gift? And typically I have a good inclination already because after our first initial calls of consultation, first session, and then this, I kind of know where you want to be. And it's to the point where I can kind of tell them a plan of what I would like to see for them. And they typically say, I really like that. I really like that plan. And of course you like the plan because it's going according to what is you, right? What your desires are, your wants, your passions, your purpose. I'm not trying to stray you away from that. We're trying to figure out what you are meant to do and then do it. So the why is pretty simple when it comes into that. But then we have to get into the next step, which can kind of take some time. And that is going to be developing a personal development mindset. That took me years. It took me two years, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less, a year and a half. Getting that personal development mindset was tough for me because I didn't have a coach at that time. I just went by myself. I read a bunch of books and I gained a bunch of knowledge. And once I was able to get enough of this personal development in my life, guess what happened? I started to think in that manner too. So now it's, I know I can, I know people can. It's just that you have to will it. You have to want it. So it depends on the person when it comes to personal development. How much do you need in order to make that shift? That is going to be dependent on you. So maybe sometimes you might get lucky and you might only need one month because you had good parents, you had a good upbringing in school, good friends then you have an easy transition. But what happened if you had a rough childhood? You didn't have parents who were supportive or teachers who cared or friends that cared. You got bullied. All of those things are a factor. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get our mind out of that pit of despair, depression, and that negativity that you can't do things, that limiting type of belief. Well, you can change your mindset. It's just that you have to counterbalance it. And I gave this example before, is if you have like a poison, you can dilute it. And so if you dilute it enough, it's going to be less lethal than if you just drank it straight. Now, it's still going to hurt you because you're drinking poison, but it's less lethal. Sometimes when we're going into personal development and then being positive, we need that less lethal dose. Once we start it, we're not going to be afraid of it or we're not going to fear it. And sometimes people start personal development and they're like, "Ah, I can't do this. It's because they started too much. They went too far. It's like fitness. You're not going to go to the gym, spend five hours there, and then the next day not go, or the next week not go because you went for five hours. I would rather you go for five minutes every single day that week. That's going to be better for you than if you just went for five hours one day right? We're trying to build a habit. We're trying to build a structure and it takes time. So we have to be aware of the timing. 
That's why I say it's going to take 90 days. It could take more, it could take less, but 90 days is the bare minimum. And I ask that if you want to transform your life, you commit to 90 days, right? If you can't commit to 90 days, don't even try to transform your life. It's going to be you starting and stopping, and it's going to be more difficult when you finally want to. So right now, you might not have a trauma. Right now, you might not have a difficulty in your life. So you don't have a motive to transform your life. But I guarantee you, the moment you have a trauma or hardship, a challenge, something that sparks initiative from you, you're going to transform your life. And it takes about 90 days. So wait for that moment if you can't do it without that trauma. Okay? Just throwing that out there. The next area, step number three, is going to be dealing with tossing out the trash. Now, many of the things that we have in our mind might be useful, but a good majority of them are not. That voice inside of our head that says we can't do things, our limiting beliefs, right? That voice, not helpful. Toss it out. Those people, those friends who are toxic, who are anchors in our life, who don't help us achieve things, who don't challenge us, they don't belong. Toss them out. All of those different factors that we have to pay attention to, and that's trash. My recommendation here, and I talk about it in the blog, is to get rid of everything. Get rid of everyone. And then start adding things back. Clean the house by getting rid of everything first, and then bringing things back after you threw it out. That's going to be a large pill to swallow. It's going to be a huge challenge for some people. But guess what? It's possible. I've done it. And when you throw out that trash, it feels like you're lost. It feels very lonely in the beginning. But after the fact, only power remains. Only certainty. Only a strong mindset. And it's completely worth it. You just have to will yourself past that uncomfortable moment in your life where you tossed everything out, you're, you feel stuck feel alone. And this is why I say have a coach. Again, this area right here, I did it by myself. You don't have to do it by yourself. I'm imploring people, don't do it by yourself if you don't have to. But if you want to do it by yourself, you can, is what I'm saying. You can just understand that it's going to take a very strong mindset. And if you had that trauma already in your life, with that difficulty already in your life, no matter what, you're going to get past it. So it might take some time. It might take a lot of effort, a trial and error also, but you will accomplish your goal. I want you to understand that too. But if you have a coach, a guide, a mentor, you're going to be able to get rid of a lot of that trial and error and really just dive toward your transformed self a lot quicker than if you were just doing it trial and error, trying to figure out what was what. So after you throw out your trash, all those thoughts that don't help you, all those people who don't help you, You bring things back into your life that will help you, right? You look at the life that you want, and you only feel things in that life that are for that new life. Now, if you're having trouble with what you should have in your life or what you shouldn't have in your life, you can try things out. So, for example, you might say, well, I want this person in my life, and then you realize that this person's very negative or something like that, and they're not giving that feeling of your new life, that new transformed life, then most likely that person needs to go, right? Same thing with certain items, behaviors, anything. So that is step three, tossing out the trash, getting everything out of your mind that doesn't serve you, whether that be your ego, your personality, your friends, whoever, right? Figure out what doesn't work and toss it out. Step four is going to be dealing with being mindful and present. That means you have to be aware of your surroundings, your time. If today is Monday, enjoy Monday. Learn to love Monday and treat it the same as Friday, the same as Saturday, same as Sunday. And then Monday is now no longer that dreaded day of the week. It's another 24 hours for you to do something amazing. And the same thing happens on Tuesday and the same thing happens every single day of that week, of every single week. There's no day that's better. All the days are equal because they have the same timestamp and they have the same goal, a better you. So being mindful and being present is going to allow you to pay attention to who you are, where you are, and what needs to be done. And then you can see around you and you can look more deeper into situations, into people. You're going to see things that have always been right in front of you, but you never paid attention to. And then once you have that 
perspective. You're going to always shoot for that good perspective, that good solution, that good positivity versus the negative side. Some people, they just fall into that negativity and they get stuck, but they don't even realize they're there. And the example I want to give you is some people go through life and they're unhappy, yet they'll smile. Just because you put on a smile does not mean you're happy. So if we know that a smile doesn't mean happiness, well, what does a smile mean? And then getting that genuine smile, that's like a goal of this step, right? Being present, being mindful. Happiness is right there. It's not at a destination. It's not a contingency. Happiness is immediate. Now, it's not immediate gratification. It's not entitlement. It's I understand I can feel whatever I want. And if I'm not feeling happy, you don't have to feel happy. But what are you feeling? And then if you're feeling sad or depressed, understanding that unraveling it and then going to that cure of what do I need to get out of this negative emotion? And not saying that emotion shouldn't be felt because if you had a tragedy in your life, you can be sad, you can be depressed, you can be angry. But how long do you stay there? That's mindset. And that was step number two. So we are getting along to where we need to be, right? And then we go into step number five, and that's going to be practicing gratitude. That's going to be being thankful for what you have in your life. There are some people in this world who don't have a roof over their head, who don't have clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, food in their belly. I know for many of the people listening to this podcast or reading this blog, they're going to most likely be in a decent type of situation. Now, I'm not saying they're in the perfect situation, but there's going to be people who are worse off. And some people who are worse off, your life is their dream. They want your mortgage. They want your crappy job. They want your broke down car. They want that. They want that bad relationship. They want that because they don't have it. So what they don't have, they look at you and they say, you're so lucky that you have this. But yet, for those people who have it that are ungrateful for it, they want more. They seek more. And there's nothing wrong with seeking more. But they're unhappy with what they have versus appreciating what they have and then going after more. There is a difference. The difference is if I'm negative and I just hate my life and I just say, you know, I hate my job. I hate my car. I hate my relationship. I want a new relationship. I want a new car. I want a new job. What is the probability of me getting that? It's actually pretty low. I would say 10% or less chance of getting all three because you're just going to be in that negativity and negativity typically doesn't spark action. Now, trauma can spark action, but negativity won't. Negativity just kind of puts you in that state of calmness of, okay, I'm not going to be taking any action, that state of inaction So we don't want that, right? We want to be active. We want to be moving toward where we want to go versus staying stagnant. That means we have to be grateful for what we have, appreciating what we have, utilizing what we have so we can get better things. And I know it's difficult in the beginning to appreciate what you have because you're so used to it already. Many people don't realize what they have until it's gone, until it's lost. Think of a loved one. Did you appreciate them when they're alive? And you might've said, yeah, I did. But how about every day? Did you appreciate them every day? Like every day was the last day. Think about that. Because if there was one more day for you on this earth, what would you do? Would you sit on the sofa and watch Netflix? Would you go hiking? Would you play with your dog? Would you spend time with family? What would you do, right? That's gonna be a good representation of where your mindset is. Because if you want to spend time with family, if you want to spend time with friends and laughing and being cheerful in your last moments, maybe that's what you should fill your life with so you don't have regrets. Sometimes people might say, well, in my last day, I just want to stay in bed and look at the ceiling and think about my life. We can dream, right? We can daydream here and there, but we are looking for action. We want to transform our life, not think about that transform life. So we have to take action. And the planning process for this is maybe one week, right? That's step number one, understanding your why. And once you have that why, you go after that purpose, that why every single day. And you're going to notice that you're going to be closer to where you want to be. And then we get to step six, the final step, 
and that's to get a coach. Now, this is going to be one of those optional steps where if you get a coach, you're going to be in good hands. You're going to be more likely to succeed. For me, I mean, I did it by myself and I probably maybe wasted a year or two on trial and error. But when I was finally an adult and I'm finally a coach, getting ready to be a coach, I'm like, coaching is so powerful. Let me get some coaches. So I got a business coach, got a mindset coach, got a mentors who have already achieved success, millions of dollars, you know, high levels of achievement in their career and professions. That right there was enough for me to say, okay, now I'm learning. Now I'm really learning. And then I can figure out all my blind spots and I can figure out all the areas where I can improve on just from having those people look at my life and say, you know what, I think we can make an adjustment here. And then when I started to make the adjustments, I started to see things move better for me. It's kind of like you have a bicycle and that bicycle was sitting out in the rain all year. Well, guess what? Now that chain on that bike is going to be rusted. How can we fix that chain, right? Yeah, we could probably ride on it. It's probably going to pop off the gears a couple times, but if we get some oil and we kind of loosen that rust and we kind of move that chain and kind of get it back to being flexible and doing what's supposed to, it works better. And our life can work better too if we get that maintenance type of work and a coach is that maintenance type of work, a guide or mentor, same thing. So when we're looking at transforming our life, we have these six steps and those six steps again are going to be understanding our why, developing a personal development mindset, throwing out the trash that doesn't belong in our life and our mind. Four, learning how to be mindful and present. Five, practicing gratitude. And six, seeking out a mentor, a coach, or a guide. If we can begin those steps, we will see progress in our life. And that's just the brain naturally moving. So we have to get that brain moving, get that brain unstuck, and get that brain in gear because the life that we want to have, it can be a possibility. We can transform our life into something better. It's just that we have to want it and we have to commit to it. So if you wanted to commit to 90 days of a better you in the comment section below, you can tell me, you can say, I'm going to commit to 90 days and then stay true to those 90 days. No commitment. If you wanted to email me coaching and session at gmail.com, say I'm in for this 90 days. And then hold yourself accountable for those 90 days. Put it in your phone. Put it in your calendar. And then after 90 days, see where you are. Did you make any progress? How much progress? And then multiply that. Because we can keep doing this process over and over and over again. And then once we solidify this bare bone foundation, then you can move on to the next step. And that's going to be moving on after you have transformed your life. And now you're looking at building a legacy building a dynasty, building an empire, whatever you want to call it. But you first have to start and make sure you have that foundation to build everything you want in your life upon. It's not a hard task. It's just a task that you have to commit to and you have to want. So if you want it, go for it. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me coaching a session at gmail.com. If you're looking for coaching, head over to reverendconcepts.com. And I will see everyone on the next episode of Coaching a Session. Until then, everyone, take care.